What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to set up a domain name with DuckDNS next on Low Res DIY. So why would you want a domain name? Well, in my case, I have a Nextcloud server that I want to have access to 24-7 from anywhere in the world. Now I could go ahead and memorize my local IP address and utilize that, but there's a couple problems with that. First of all, I, I have enough trouble just knowing what day of the week it is, let alone remembering a long IP address. Uh, the second thing is that what if you want to give other people access to your next cloud server? Well, then they're going to have to memorize that IP address also. And the third thing is it, most ISPs give you what they call a dynamic IP address, which means it's ever changing. So if you don't know what an IP address is, think of it as a phone number. People don't memorize phone numbers anymore. All they do is they grab their cell phone, they start a contact, they give the, the person's name, put their cell phone number in there, and they're ready to go. Whenever they want to access it, they just look up that person's name. Well, basically, the person's name, the contact information, is your domain name, and the IP address is the phone number of that person. But we all have that one friend that every six months they're changing their phone number, whatever the excuse is, crazy ex-girlfriend, mobs after me, I don't know. For some reason, they're always changing their phone number. Well, that's what the I, what your internet service provider does to you on occasion. They'll change your IP address and, and won't even tell you. You won't even notice it's, it's happening. And this is where the beauty of DuckDNS comes in. It will not only give you a domain name to use, but it will also keep track of the changes the ISP might make to your uh, IP address, your public IP address. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is create a container. I've created one. I've named uh, container 103. It's named Duck DNS. Has one core and 512 megabytes of memory. I've already done an apt update and app upgrade. Uh, so we're ready to go with this container. If you don't know how to create a container, never done it before, check this video out and it will walk you through the process of creating your first container. Once you're finished with that, you want to log over or you want to go over to duckdns.org. I'll have a link in the description and they have different options for logging in. I'm going to sign in with my GitHub and you'll see there are no domains created yet. So all you have to do is type in your domain name that you want and provide it. No one else has that domain name. It will give it to you. So let's hit add. And no one had that, so it has created the domain name for me. That part's done. Now you want to set it up to where it will keep your IP address up to date. And they make it super simple. All you have to do is click on this install. Scroll down. First step is to pick your domain. We only have one, so we pick it. You choose the operating system you're setting this up on. They've got all sorts of choices, but I'm using the Linux cron. Scroll down and look at that. It has generated the instructions for me. Uh, the first one is uh, install a cron tab. So copy that guy. Back to your container. Paste it in. Hit enter. Okay, create it. Next thing up, it wants to make sure you have curl. And we do not, so we need to install it. Apt install curl once that has completed it's going to want you to make a deck directory duck dns then it wants you to uh change into that directory so let's copy and we'll paste this guy in directory is now made let's cd into it let's change directories and now we're in that directory. Now inside that directory, they want you to create this .sh file, duck.sh. And they're using Vi. I, I can't stand Vi. I like nano. So I'm going to hit nano duck.sh. Enter. So it created the file. And in that file, they want you to copy this string. So let's copy it. And we'll paste it in. 
And what this string is doing is it's telling DuckDNS that low res test, the domain that we created with this token needs to be updated periodically. It tells it how to talk back to it and which uh, domain is getting updated. Now, if you have more than one domain, let's say we made a low res test one, all you would do is go past the first domain, give it a comma, low res test one, and then it would automatically update that domain name also. We only have one domain name, so we're gonna set it back to where it was at. So let's hit Control X. Yes, we wanna save it and keep it that file name. Go back to our instructions. They want us to make that file executable. So let's paste that in, and it is now executable. Now I want you to adjust the cron tab so that every five minutes it sends a signal back to Duck, your computer. This container sends a signal back to Duck DNS and says, hey, my IP address is the same, or hey, the uh, internet service provider, they changed it again. Here is what the new IP address is. So we'll right click, we'll paste. Oops. Actually got to copy it. And it gives you different options for adjusting it. Obviously, the easiest is using Nano, which is what I like. So I'm going to hit 1, Enter, scroll all the way down to the bottom, go back and copy this command right here. And we want to paste it in. Control X, yes, keep the name the same. Then it wants you to run that sh file. So let's go ahead and run it. And it ran. I don't see any errors or anything like that. The next thing they're going to want you to do is they want you to check your duck.log file and uh, with cat, but we don't have cat installed, so we're going to use nano. And what it's saying is if it if it says if your duck.log log 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 wow, that's a tough word, man. Uh, if it says OK, that means everything's up and running. It's working fine. If it says KO, that means there was a problem and you're going to need to figure it out. So it's nano duck.log and we have an OK. So it's good to go. We're, we're set up. It's talking back and forth. You have a domain name. The next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, create a port forwarding rule. And you're going to want to forward port 80 and port 443 to whatever container, virtual machine, program, whatever you're wanting to access with that domain name. Now, myself, I want to access this uh, next cloud virtual machine right here. So I went into my uh, router, created the port forwarding to that that IP address. Now I wish I could tell you how to do it on your router, but I don't know what router you have. The easiest route would just be look up your router's name and model and do a search for port forwarding, create the rule, you're good to go. And once you do that, you should be able to log into your new domain name and it should route you to your system. Like I just routed myself to my next cloud server using that domain name. One thing you're going to notice is right here, it says it's not secure because it's using HTTP. The way you're going to want to resolve that is you're going to want to use something like Let's Encrypt or CertBot or something like that to give you, uh, to encrypt all your data as it's going through. Now, myself, I have a PuTTY session opened up into the virtual machine that I have running next cloud and I'm going to run this guy right here and this is going to run me through the process of setting up uh, let's encrypt with my next cloud system okay now that I went through the process of setting let's encrypt up with this guy I should be able to refresh it and it comes back with the little lock symbol, which means I'm now under HTTPS. It's using port 443. I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, delete the port forwarding rule for port 80. And I'm only going to use port 443. And the reason I'm going to do that, let's have a look here and 
we'll go into my threat management if you look at traffic high attempts severity of a, a security attack and what did they try to come in on port 80 all this other nonsense is stuff that's just always going to happen but if we scroll down let's see oh here's a whole bunch of them every one of them's on port 80 so my suggestion is to go ahead remove that port 80 once you have everything set up you're now encrypted keep a strong password and keep a strong username all right domain name created ip address public ip address continually being updated access to nextcloud from anywhere in the world or whatever app you might want to use this with um, if you're interested in nextcloud keep a lookout i'm going to make a few videos on that coming up here in the next i don't know a couple weeks month whenever i get get time to do it uh so until next time hit that like button hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching